we auctioned off um, Red Bull Sim in Vegas livery signed by Max, Sergio and Christian. Our Sim program was born out of our show cars. So we're using the same chassis that we use for the show cars for each individual team. The chassis are made of carbon fiber. And it we take about 10 days to build from start to finish because you've got all the composites, then paint shop and then the fitting. So today we're working on the championship edition uh, simulator, which is made in house. It's Max Verstappen's sort of livery. So you've got the carbon fiber chassis, which is the, used, made using the same CAD data that Red Bull used for their 2023 F1 car. The simulator is made of carbon fiber, which is laid up in house. And then goes straight into paint. Uh, we've actually got one that hasn't been stickered up over here, so it's literally just been made and brought over to us. Yeah, completely bare chassis, and we will eventually get around to stickering it. So it will look exactly the same as the one we've just seen over there. First things we do is to fit all the hardware. We'll get a bracket on the front here, and then the what we call the, the semi cube will go on the front. So we have a, a fan on here as well, which will fit. So this is all uh, trimmed in house, which is to aid the cooling. So the, the data that we use for this is the same as we use for the show cars. So this hole here used for the 360 camera, we actually utilize for cable to come through and uh, we have a TV stand which will come here and the cables run up there. So the nice little uh, use of that hole there. Speaker holes here. So eventually we'll put some speakers in there, um, we'll put some rib nuts in uh, to to mount it on. Same up here, another speaker. So we've got three speakers and a subwoofer. So we have a rack mounted system, which we bolt onto the back here. And then the PC slides in, so it's nice and easy to work on. So this sim is based on the 2023 RB19 uh, Red Bull F1 car. When you're sat in it, it makes you feel like Max Verstappen, Sergio Perez, whoever you want to feel like. Normally the steering wheel goes straight onto the force feedback, but in order for us to allow people to sit inside, get your feet down to the pedals, you can't have the force feedback immediately here the force feedback system, which is at the front here. So the column runs all the way up, just as it would in a normal F1 car. PC reset mm -hmm. button and power button. It's normally on the back of the PC, so we're, we're remote mounting it. These are a military style connector. So we're using a mil spec connector, very much what they use in Formula One. A joining connector, which is soldered up. That's what they use on aircraft to do that, do the same sort of uh, job. So it's a it's a military specification plug, guaranteed a connection on all the all the pins. So there's no you know no loss of uh, connection anywhere, which is obviously very important for considering the vibration that goes into the um, into the car. So this this the Red Bull Sim's finished, and it's leaving today for Taiwan, and it's going in this custom-made flight case that we use for worldwide travel. This looks beautiful now, but after it's been traveled around the world a few times, it will be absolutely f So this is the same as what you use in Formula One. I mean, usually like they last about a season in Formula One because they travel so much and they just get bashed to sh So this beautiful case, that costs a lot of money. It won't look like that when it gets there. Can you imagine traveling in an airplane being handled by the, the shipping companies? No chance, poor flight case. This sim we had in Selfridges. Two more sims here for customers. This one's being built and uh, this one's leaving for the US. We'll ask Dale when it's going, because he's doing the wiring. Dale used to wire all my cars when I worked in Formula One, and he, he used to work a lot faster. So let's have a look, see what's going on. What are you doing? Yeah, just get all the, uh, the wiring in here, tied it up, make it look nice. You've got any sandwiches, didn't they? No. <laughs> <laughs> just be broken glasses. We're just putting the um, speaker wires in. This is all the connections for the amplifier that goes in the back of the sim. And this bunch here is just for the PC. So fair amount of cables to, to go into a, a simulator. This way you change it from 240 to 110. So literally it tells you on there as well. P3 to P5. 230s, P4, P5, 120 volt, P3, P5, that's it. And then back on. I like to keep the PC and the amp with their own kettle leads that are, bond, are molded. Okay, yeah. Just so it's, because they're probably the biggest consumers. Yeah. 
This is the PC, the brains of the job. And putting everything together to make the customer experiences easy as possible. For those people who use simulators, you will know that you spend countless hours of pain trying to get hardware and software to join and work together. So we've got a few very clever solutions that make it seamless for the customer. They turn the sim on and you just go into straight playing. So we supply the sim with uh, the latest F1 game. We've run in F123 here. For some of the hardware we have, we use the top key uh, that's available. So we have the SimCube Pro 2, the Rexing controller here. As you can see, pull the telemetry data from the game. There is no real elegant way of getting in. It is a race car. We take out the headrest, just like the real race car. You've got to actually kind of you know, really jump in there. And when you get in, you are properly lying down. This isn't just, you know, you're sat in a sim, this is you sat in race position. So you get your feet in and you'll be surprised at how far back those pedals go. Once that customer is in, um, we've designed it so that everything they can control is all from in the cockpit. So they don't have to be able to use the keyboard and mouse. So they jump in the sim, press the on off button, that starts to pull the hardware and the software. PC will turn on, um, the hardware will start loading. Um, and then what will happen for the customer is they just have a seamless experience of getting to the sim, everything just starts up, loads, and they're ready to go. Everything's been thought about, the customer experience once they're in, and how to make it as easy as possible. Because driving a race car isn't easy, and once you're in this sim, you're not getting out very quick. So yeah, everything from your volume for the actual uh, system, and we do a custom control mapping for the whole screen. So you can see it's all stickered up. So everything controllable in the game, once you're in, it's all done on the controller. You don't need a keyboard or mouse. You just get in and you play. Finally, put the rack mounted system in here. So with the PC, which is this part here, we have the cold air coming in through the front here, and then the hot air gets pumped out the back. Because this is traveling around the world, it needs to be really secure in here. So obviously this one, we're just putting the finishing touches on. The PC can slide in and out for us to work on it. But eventually we will bolt that up really sturdy. So nothing moves in there perfectly stable for traveling around the world to our customers. All the elements that I've just shown you add up to give our customers the most authentic racing experience that you can find.